Hey guys, I have another art haul video for us today. It is a very merry art haul given the Christmas season. Um, at our home, we are already starting to get decked out in Christmas flair and putting up all the decorations and such. And so I thought this would be a fun video. It's probably a pretty lengthy video, I think. I haven't edited it yet. Um, all the swatching and going through all the supplies and talking about maybe what colors I liked and others that might be a little redundant. And it's a great video, I think, to throw on if you just need something in your studio and you want to explore maybe some new things, check out colors and maybe some markers or pencils or whatever items I got that you maybe were thinking to try. I have been getting really into sketchbooks lately and the reason for that was a lot of stuff with social media and I'll probably talk about this more in another video because I just want to keep this light. But social media tends to put a lot of pressure on artists to always do things to a finished way um, and in the same way so somebody can come to your feed and just see the same thing over and over. And I feel like sketchbooks are just an opportunity to really free up and try different things without worrying about whether it all looks the same. So. Rather than show you like an overhead shot, just quickly, I'll just show you kind of some of the stuff I've been doing. This was from a photo at Oliver Mill um, in Middleborough, Massachusetts that I took um, as a reference photo to draw at home. And then I've just been going on map crunch and doing some sketches because I can just pull something up while I'm sitting on the couch or sitting at my table and just do even like little quick thumbnail sketches. And these are a way for me not just to practice composition, but sort of get used to using and layering sketchbook supplies in different ways and seeing how to do that in ways that I like. And there's another one from some more map crunch videos or pictures really. So if you don't know what map crunch is, it's super fun. You can just go on and keep clicking the button and it will take you all over the world and just show you pictures from random places and you can pan around just like, you know, like a Google Maps type of thing and see a street view or sometimes it's not even a street view, it's just random things. But that's what I've been doing lately just to have something where I can just not feel too precious about the whole thing and I've been having a ton of fun. So I went out and ordered a bunch more supplies to play with and that's a lot of what the, this video is about is all the things that I was interested in bringing into my sketchbooks. Um, I'm really excited to share these supplies with you. I hope that this is fun for you and it sparks some new ideas. So let's dive in. of gouache. Most of it's acrylic. There are a few tubes. These little guys are um, regular gouache because I had some colors sort of missing from my palette that I feel like what I had, you know, I can mix things, but I wanted more convenience colors. So I got these to add to my palette. These are all acrylic gouache, and my other acrylic gouache is all um, Turner. I got a set of the Japanese colors, which are awesome, but there's sort of some gaps um, a little bit in their colors and in that particular set. And so I just went and looked for more gouache. I usually order everything from Blick and they don't carry Turner acrylic gouache, so I grabbed some Holbein. I've never used Holbein acrylic, acrylic gouache before, so I'm excited to swatch these and try these out. They also had a huge ivory white, so this isn't like a stark white, and this is a great convenience color because I usually, <clears throat> even in my larger paintings, I keep a bottle of white paint that I tint myself to more of a creamy color. So this will be awesome to have as a convenience color, which is why I bought a large tube of it. So I'm gonna just start 
sort of lining these up. My camera is a little, let me see, I'm gonna pull that down. So that we can start swatching them. And I like to group them kind of by color, not out of perfectionism, but just so that you can see how the colors relate to each other within their own little niche of a color. This is a gray. And we'll put the beigey color over here. And I got my little paintbrush and I'm just gonna dip right into these. And see, this is probably, yeah. So this is about the color of the page. It's a nice creamy white. I'm really happy to have this because this is going to be awesome to just have in my bag if I go out or just at my table so I don't have to mix it. I can just grab that and add that to whatever I'm doing. So this was called Ivory White. This is Wine Red. And this just looked like a really rich red, and it is. So it's a little bit, you can tell where it's a little bit thinner. This one leans a little bit more pink. If you've seen my other videos, I generally don't have anything real purpley in it. I don't use purple. I don't really even use magenta, but sometimes you need something that runs a little bit purple for mixing. So this is like kind of a happy medium where it's a little bit pink, but not too pink. This is vermilion and I wanted a nice orangey red that's similar to like a cad red light. And that is gonna work nicely for that. This is shell pink. And I think I have something similar in the Turner. Oh, hang on. This cat hair with every video. This is a really nice color. I tend to add this, I think, what is it called? I think Liquitex just calls it light pink, but I actually add this as like a mother color to my other colors to harmonize things. And this is a really nice kind of surprising color to use to do that. A lot of people use brown, I'm sorry, browns or blacks and things like that. But I really like the way that harmonizes things. And this is light apricot. This is a really nice color too. I really love when um, paints have subtle neutralized colors, like a good variety of them within their lines of paint. Because I know how to mix colors really well, but a lot of times for these smaller tubes of paint to use in sketchbooks and things, I really like to have um, convenience colors. And that was Naples Yellow. And I really like the way these colors all look together. Right now, this is mustard. This is kind of a weird greeny yellow. I just thought it would be an interesting color to add and it is, I really like that. That's just, it's probably not something I'll use all the time. Like it'll probably take me forever to use up that color, but just to have it as an option it's just fun. And this is cream yellow. And I'll list all the colors below. Um, I'll try to do it in order that I swatched them, but um, no promises there. This is ash yellow. This is another very neutrally color. So it's very muddy. So this is another, this could be a really good mother color too to mix into your other colors to calm them down and harmonize them. Sometimes it can be fun to just swatch your colors, like take a few colors that you really like and then pick a mother color and mix that color into all the other colors and swatch them and see what you get. 
And this is olive. And this is a really nice color. It's another, this is really saturated the way the mustard is. This is actually a really, it's a muted, but it's actually, you can kind of see how saturated that is. Like it's got a lot of pigment in there. This is gonna be great um, for mixing too. Saturated colors, if you're afraid of color, don't be afraid of color. Um, saturated colors are great because they can go a long way with mixing with other colors. You can always calm down a saturated color, but you can't really saturate a really neutralized paint or a paint that's got a lot of white in it. It doesn't really work that way, but the opposite is true. So having some saturated colors in your palette is really awesome. And this is Misty Green. So this is another great neutral convenience color to have. Just making sure everything staying on camera. This is Ash Green. And this is nice. If you notice, some of these are a little bit more opaque than others, and I suspect that they have um, titanium white or something in them to give them that opacity. But anything that looks really chalky like this tends to be more opaque. Things that are really saturated like this tend to be a little more on the transparent side. So gouache is never gonna be totally transparent. I mean, you can water it down and make it transparent to a certain extent, but um, some are still more opaque than others. So they're usually opaque to semi-opaque. And this is Pale Aqua. And so I liked my Turner paints, but I feel like these go down a little bit more nicely. I feel like the Turner is just a little bit more sticky than these ones, but I'm happy with both. So again, that's Pale Aqua, and that's a pretty opaque color that'll be good for kind of settling down for like a winter palette if I neutralize it a little bit. It says ultramarine deep and that's really intense but look how good it looks with those neutrals around it. So that's another little thing is that Saturated colors, what makes a saturated color look really good is having some neutralized or chilled out or less saturated colors around them. It really makes those pops of saturation really sing and that's also a form of contrast you can use to um, lead the viewer's eye through a painting. And this is Smalt Blue. And that's a fun color. I have that in my regular gouache palette too. This is ash blue. And I have this one as well. I use this one a lot for moody beachy scenes in my gouache. So I'm happy to have this in an acrylic version. It's just this sort of smoky bluish gray color. Misty Blue. And that's just a really, this is a really nice light bluish gray color. It's a very wintry color. And Neutral Gray number four. So that's the other fun thing. All the Holbeins, they have a range of grays that you can choose from. And I wanted like a nice dark one for mixing and this is more of a warm gray. And you can tell, cause even though this is a blue, it runs gray and when you have these near each other, you can tell how much warmer that is. This is a little bit more of a brownish gray. And this is Ash Rose. That's just another nice neutral color. I think this will be good for making palettes um, and mixing into for like a mother color or to use as like a autumn color. And then my other gouache that I have, so I'll put these on here too, 
These are regular gouache, so these aren't acrylic. And the difference, um, if you don't already know, is that with regular gouache, it's water-based. It's like watercolor. And they're more transparent. And so because they're like watercolor, you can have them in pans to take out with you. And I love these two, and I love the convenience of having a whole set of pans with me. They're just not quite as opaque as their acrylic siblings. And sometimes I really want opacity. So this was ultramarine deep, so these two are the same, so that's the acrylic version, and this is the regular gouache version. This is alizarin crimson, because I needed kind of a, this is a little bit more of a purpley red, but in a really subtle way. And I needed that in my regular gouache palette. And then I got these to play around with. I thought these were going to be a little bit more on the white side. I didn't realize how orange these were gonna be, otherwise I wouldn't have ordered both of them. But this is Jean Brilliant, number one. If I'm remembering my colors correctly, I think Jean is French for yellow. And Jean Brilliant, number one. So you can at least see the difference between these two. And so it's a nice peachy color. So I do like them. They're just not what I thought they were going to be. And so those are all the gouaches. And I'll just show you. I put all my regular gouache in a bigger tin. I have them in an artist tool kit, which is like a really flat, thin palette. It's one of these. But this gets used up pretty quickly and then I've got to refill it. So I want to keep this for when I go out and leave the house to do stuff. But if I'm home, I wanted something with bigger pans and more paint in it. So I did this. Um, and then what I did to keep the gouache, so this is all gouache, still a little bit sticky, to keep it from cracking was I added like two drops of glycerin in and used a toothpick to mix it all together and it just keeps everything from, keeps the gouache from cracking. And then I mixed these whites so that I would have a warm white on here for regular gouache because I don't know if Holbein makes a regular gouache in their ivory white. But anyways, I mixed some over here so I'd have a few on hand and then just put my other gouache colors in there. All right, I'm excited about these. I got a bunch of Ecoline brush pens because I want to do a lot of sketchbook stuff and I like having markers that I can lay down first as sort of a transparent color. And I didn't order quite every color though. I ordered almost every color. So we'll swatch all of these. And I got some blues as well. This is way more purple than I thought it was going to be. So we'll have to see. This is ultramarine deep, which is normally a purplier color. Okay, and then I got some grays and stuff in there. So I didn't quite get every pack. I think the pack of blues either had way too many similar aqua colors than I wanted and then the, a lot of the like ultramarines came in a purpley came in with the purple colors and I didn't want a whole bunch of purple so I bought some blues separately and then some grays and stuff but we'll go through and give all of these a swatch maybe we'll start with the what are these these are just like an autumn palette, but these colors aren't in the other palettes. So maybe we'll pull those out and I'll swatch those when we get to them so they can be in their rightful place. All right, let's start with red. 
figure out how to open these. I'm pretty sure, or did I buy a double? I went through and made a list of all the colors I wanted and all the colors they had and figured out which packs to buy. It was this semi-insane undertaking, but all right. So this is color 441 Mahogany. So this is a little bit more of a brownish red and that's a really nice neutral. And I've never used these before. These are going down really nice. And I like that they're thicker than Tombow's. I'm gonna grab this other autumn color. This is <clears throat> 422 Reddish Brown. So it's a little bit more red than the mahogany. And that's a nice color. This is 334 Scarlet. That's a really nice orangey red. Probably should have done this color first. This is Carmine 318. This is Burnt Sienna 411. So it's interesting the way they pack these together is this I would have thought in these two would have been in just sort of a brown pack, but they've kind of put some of their browns in with their reds. This is Deep Orange 237. And this is Vermilion 311, which I thought I already did this. Maybe not. Nope. So that's a nice range of oranges and reds and browns. Let me just make sure, yep, get them all. So I'm gonna set those aside so I know I've got those. And then we're gonna do, what are these? These are more of a yellow. I'm gonna do these peachy colors first. <clears throat> So these are just a bunch of really light, I think, neutrals. So this is Pastel Red 381. Yep, so this is really nice to lay down in a background, I feel like. This is 258 Apricot, Apricot, Apricot. That's a really nice color. 420 beige. Again, that's a really nice neutral. These are all really nice neutrals to have. This is 374 pink beige. And 439 sepia light. I always love seeing saturated colors with neutrals because I just feel like this right here is such a nice harmonious palette. It's all kind of near each other on the color wheel, but there's neutrals and there's saturation and it's just, it's fun to look at. Let's see. These are some orangey, yellowy colors. Things are rolling away. So saffron yellow, two, four, five. Gold ochre, two, three, one. That's really nice. I'll end up using that a lot, I think. Uh, sand yellow, two, five, nine. That's really unexpected compared to the cap color. That actually kind of goes with that. This could be. This will be fun, I think, in the summertime to use with beachy stuff or in the fall. This is 407 Deep Ochre. It's a good neutral. And this is 227 Yellow Ochre. So these are sort of more orangey in terms of like color bias. These two are a little more orange. This is a little more orange. And these two are actually starting to lean more towards the green which is, that's a really nice range of colors to have. 
And then these are the yellows, which that's pretty orange. That's kind of funny. I wonder if we already have this one. This is 236 light orange. Nope, we don't have that. That's really bright. I don't know how much I'll use that. That's really, I don't know if I have a traffic cone to throw into a sketchbook, maybe. 202 deep yellow. I like that. And I'm noticing too, look, I can see me shifting which of these I use which with different seasons. So even though I'm not immediately drawn toward every single color, I can see me using some to experiment or change things up or just maybe more neutral colors with like spring and fall and more saturated colors with summer in terms of like these warm colors that are here. So this is 201 light yellow. That's really bright. This is like a rubber ducky. This is 233 Chartreuse. I'm actually really excited to see what this is. So I think this is going to be a yellowy, uh, yellowy green, greenish yellow. And yeah, it's just leaning more towards green. And the last of the yellows is pastel yellow, 226. And that's a really nice light color to have. And moving on to the greens. Got these. Gotta get them all together. I'm rolling away. Ew. There's another one, and then I bought this guy. This one's 666. It's interesting that they didn't skip over that number. Um, pastel green. It's a really nice color. Again, having these like really light colors to just have as a marker, because I feel like it's really easy to find saturated markers, but markers that are kind of neutralized or really pale uh, are trickier to find and it's nice to have them. This is Spring Green 665. Again, this is probably not a color I'd grab all the time, but in the spring, I'd probably use the spring green. So this is 676 grass green. Same thing with that. I don't know how much I'd use that all the time, but like again, if the season is right and then you wanna build a color palette that has more saturation, that's a good one to have. This is bronze green, 657, and this this I like better. It's just a little more neutralized. You can tell this has got more brown in it. And it's just a little bit more subtle. This is just 600 green. That's really fun because everything on here is so yellowy if you notice this. And then this is a bluish green. And it just adds freshness to all of this that we're seeing here. Just make sure. You know, I'm gonna come, no, I'm gonna stay down here and finish up the greens. So this is light green at 601. Uh-oh. Sad, it's all dried up. I wonder if there's a way to wet those again. So I'll have to set that aside and contact Blick maybe to get a replacement. This is 656 forest green. And that's like a nice rich, this is more of like what you think of as green when you pull out like a box of crayon. So yeah, that was forest green. I would have expected that to be like more brown than this. So it's a little bit disappointing, but I'm really sad about this because I think I would have liked this color. These are, maybe I did buy all the, Aqua blues. So I'm gonna gather them all up. Just quite a bit. Is this a blue or a gray? This is a blue. So I might have to do is put the, these are kind of like cool green aquas. So maybe I'll keep those together and do the other blues separate. 
So this is 640, it's bluish green. So it's a really vibrant aqua color. This is 661 turquoise green. And I like that because at least there's a value difference even though they're really similar in a lot of ways. This is fur green, it's 654. And I like that because it's more neutralized and subtle. And 602, which is a deep green. And that's nice. These are like, these will be great to have in the summer, I think. And then I'm gonna grab these other. Blues. So the other thing to know about these, these are actually really expensive. I ordered them, I mean, did I say expensive? I mean inexpensive. I ordered them from Blick and I think for a pack of them, they weren't that expensive, whatever they were. They were a lot cheaper um, to buy the packs than to buy them individually. But the nice thing is, is if you have colors that you like that you use up really quickly, you can just buy the individual marker to replace. So this is 580 pastel blue. Really like that. This is sky blue light 551. It's really intense. Um, what is this? 506 ultramarine deep. This isn't really like an ultramarine. This is a little bit more like a phthalo blue. So just know that if you're looking for these and you want a purpley blue, the ultramarine <clears throat> isn't really purpley like it usually is. This is ultramarine violet 507. I'm actually okay with this. That's subtle. It's a little bit of a grayed out purple. It's not really super purple. What I want is whatever the color is between these two colors, and I don't think they make one, which is super disappointing. Um, this is Indigo 533. That's a really nice color. Indigo is actually more saturated than this. This is way more grayed out, but I'm totally okay with that. I would actually rather this. This is a really awesome color to have because when I put things like more saturated things like colored pencil or gouache or those kinds of things with this, it's just gonna look so good. And this is Prussian Blue 508. And Prussian Blue is normally a little bit more neutralized than this, a little bit darker, but this is a really great color to have too. I like that, it looks really rich. Um, let me see what I have left. I think I have just four more of the markers and they're all neutral, so I'll just do them together. This is 738 Cold Gray Light. So you almost can't see that until it sinks into the paper. This is really nice to have and I think is gonna look really nice using with these other, and you can layer them too, Let's see. Um, those are gonna look really nice together. This is Sepia Deep 440. That'll be nice to have, that's a really rich brown. This is just regular Sepia 416. So that's a lot lighter and you get a nice value difference with those. And then this is just black. I don't usually use black, but sometimes Every once in a while, it's nice to have. So overall, I really like these. I like the range of colors. Um, like I said before, I've never owned any of these. Pretty sure I said that. And the brush tips on these are really nice there. They've got some spring to them. Oh, you can make little marks with them. So these are fun. So if you're looking for like a relatively inexpensive but nice brush marker, these are nice. I just want to see, these have already dried onto the paper. I just want to see if they move at all. So they do. So that's another thing. If you wanted to put them down and then be able to move them a little bit, you can do that. You probably don't want to do that on super papery paper. You want to do it on something with some sizing because even on this, this is a moleskin and it's sized paper. So it's real smooth. It doesn't have that like rough paper feel to it. It's still 
pulling off some of the paper, but that's okay. All right, so those are the eco lines. I think next we'll take a look at the pan pastels because I've never owned any of those before and I'm very excited about them. Uh-oh, that guy broke, no. one's broken. I think when they packed this, they packed everything up pretty tight. So I think they probably thought things weren't going to move around enough, but I think these all needed to be packed in some bubble wrap. It's kind of disappointing, but I tried to get when I was picking colors, kind of colors that I would use, but also a range of values and some warm and cool colors. So I'll, if I like these, I'll probably get more of these. So yeah, so I've got some lights and some darks, some cools, some warms, and then some really saturated things against like more neutral things. So that's a tip. If you just want to try like grabbing a few of something to see if you even like them. And these are relatively inexpensive. I think they're like five bucks a piece. Um... Yeah, if you lights versus darks, neutrals versus saturated colors and warms versus cools, if you kind of check all those boxes, you'll have enough to play around with them, I think, to see if they're going to work for whatever you want. I don't have any sponges that I can find right now. A lot of times people put them on with sponges. I don't know that I would do that anyway, so I'm just going to try this with a paintbrush. And I think I'm gonna go light to dark <clears throat> and do it that way. These are just fun. And I think these, yeah, these screw onto each other so you can make like a stack of them. I think the only downside is then you almost can't tell what colors are where in your stack. I wish they came with like a little sticker or something on the side so that if you did do that, if you're traveling or something, you can know where to unscrew, but that's okay. So this is just very velvety soft. And this one is orange tint. And they have a ton of different colors. And so just gonna scrub onto the paper. And so I'm gonna see, so that's really light, which I like, but I just wanna see if I can build a little bit and you can you can get it it's never going to be darker than this obviously but you can get it about as dark as that and I want to try I think to get some of this off I'll just pick up some of that I'll tell you what color it is after I put the cover back on this is a really nice, so mixing these together is nice. That's what I wanted to see is if I would get kind of like a neutralized greeny color. This is dangerous. And that's the blue on its own. It's very light, but I'm envisioning using these as something to put down on the paper for like a soft background before I put a sketch in just to have another kind of thing to play with. Just rub all that onto the paper. And so that's a nice color. So that was turquoise tint. This is red iron oxide tint. So I'm pretty sure they have the darker version of all these colors. And I think I did buy iron oxide. So if you're looking for more saturated or darker colors, they obviously have those. So this is a really nice, again, a light color to have. It's just a nice peachy color. I often don't buy things that are orange, but I really like that color, especially on the cream paper. And I like this. This could be awesome for building up layers for an autumn scene or even spring. It's just got that nice subtlety to it. 
this is. Let's see what it is before I open it. it is raw umber tint. I think this is the last of the tints. I wanted something neutral that I could put down that's kind of like a warm gray and that'll do the jobs. These are all just really, really subtle colors. And so as far as swatching goes, I think the other ones are gonna be a little more exciting just because they're gonna show up more. We'll do, I think this is, this is Permanent Red Extra Dark. And I just wanna clean off my brush to get the tints off because it's kind of like having a white. This is very velvety. I don't know if you can see that, it's super cool. And this is a really nice rich color to have. If I wanted like a darker background or something, I could block in, you know, trees or something with this for fall leaves. Mix it. This is, I never know how to pronounce this, Dairy Lied, Diary Lied, Yellow Extra Dark. So obviously I was thinking autumn when I grabbed and picked colors. So one thing I'm noticing overall is even if the color is saturated on here, once you put it down on the paper, because it's got the paper showing through, it naturally kind of neutralizes the color. And it might be that if you build it up, that's what I'm trying to see, you'll get more saturation if you build it up. And I've got three more of these. This is chromium oxide green. This could be good for like a wintry scene for pine trees, just blocking in that area and then going in and putting detail in with pencils or gouache. That's sort of how I envisioned using these. Just seeing, see how these mix. So those two are nice together. It makes a nice sort of olivey green, warms it up a little. This is turquoise extra dark. It's a little bit it's a neutralized color, it almost looks like a gray, but I don't know how it'll be. Yeah, so this is almost like a green gray. This is another good wintry color. <coughs> Sorry. So this pushes into the paper better as suspected with, if you use your finger or um, if you use a sponge, I just don't like using sponges for some reason. So I'm gonna have to play around with different tools. Might be that I settle on a sponge anyway. Can I do this? That's neutral gray. This is raw umber. I think extra dark. So there might be multiple raw umbers. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but our neighbor has a husky. <laughs> and he's out howling right now. At least I think so. We have coyotes around here too, but they're usually not out in the middle of the day. So that's a good neutral to have. This would actually be really cool like this and this to do some kind of a night scene 
which I've never really done before, but that could be exciting. And this is Neutral Gray Extra Dark 2. And so these are all kind of near each other. They're almost like different versions of grays. Like I know this is sepia, so it's a brown, but it's almost like this is a brownish gray. The, what is it? The neutral gray? Yeah, it is a neutral gray. And then the turquoise extra dark is almost like a green gray. So this could be like, like a cool gray, a warm gray, and a neutral gray for some color choices. I like those. I'm excited to play with them just because it's something new. I've never tried using these as a background. I just want to try grabbing. We will swatch these shortly. Um, but these are the colored pencils that I got. And I just want to see how they layer. So this is... Yeah, I can see how I would use these just because with the layering and stuff that you can do with the colored pencils. And the colored pencils go over this really, really nicely. I find sometimes that colored pencils, for some reason, don't go over marker, like not acrylic marker, just regular marker um, or like watercolor marker very well. For some reason, it just, it doesn't go down. So I like having things that the colored pencils can go over because I'm really interested in those right now. All right, I think the last thing I have is colored pencils. So we're gonna go ahead and swatch those. I'm making the page all dirty from the pastel. But one thing I wanna show you really quick. So I have, these ones are Derwent Light Fast Pencils. I really like these because they're just a little bit chunkier than the Luminance. They have a little bit more weight to them. Um, but I like both pencils, so I got a huge variety of both. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still getting over a cold. And um, so we'll swatch them. But one of the problems I had, because I have some of these pencils, is keeping track of what I already have. And I noticed that was a huge barrier to me actually buying more pencils is I didn't want to take the time to figure out what I had versus picking out new pencils. And so then I looked online and got the brilliant idea that somebody else might've had the brilliant idea to make color charts um, for the colored pencil. So I printed out one out for Derwent Lightfast and I printed out one for the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. This will help me see, this one's got a front and back to it, um, at a glance, what I have and maybe like, do I have enough saturated colors or enough neutrals? Do I have enough lights versus darks? You know, getting into that whole thing again. Do I have enough warms versus cools? Just so that I have enough variety because I don't necessarily want every single color. Um, like I said, purple can just, you know, who needs that? So we don't need those. Um, so this way I can kind of see if I have enough of that variety in my palette just by looking at it and I can see, oh, you know, I really like that color. No, I don't have it. Okay, I can just go ahead and get it and I'm not having to go through pencil by pencil every time I do an art supply purchase. The only thing to note, this Caran d'Ache Luminance, and I think this one had some too. They've changed their color names over the years um, in part because some of them had like flesh color names to them. And so that changed a little bit. And I can't remember quite what they changed them to because I had to, but I think if you look up the number, the number is still the same. It's just the name of the color got changed to non-flesh oriented um, colors. I can't remember if anything changed on Derwent. Derwent doesn't have the number on this color chart, but there's so many out there. You can just Google these and find one you like and print one out for yourself. And I don't know, I just find it so, so helpful to have a catalog of what I already have because I can go ahead and swatch these, but I don't want to write down every single one and then be like looking for all the blues I have in three different places because they're in three different sketchbooks or a thing on my wall. So this was a way to have those all together. And that was a really long rambly way to say that. 
Let me just see. These are all... Oh, no, there's a light fast in here. I just want to make sure I'm doing all the light fast with the light fast. I'm going to try to group these, but I really don't want to sit on here and sort through like, like that many pencils <laughs> to group them while we're all sitting here. And you're like, hey, lady, we just, we just want to see what colors these are. And this makes me insane. I won't peel these off right now, but I'm going to have to go through and peel off, peel off all the stickers. So the luminance don't have the stickers on them, but the Derwent light fast do. So this is, I'll never be able to put these, by the way, in order. I don't think I'm going to be able to put any of these in order. So if you're watching this just and you're like, I really like that color for the love of God, just please write it down because my brain cannot sit here and listen to myself again afterwards to put all these colors in order. I will make myself crazy. So, okay. So that's, this one's ocean blue. And again, these are all Derwent Lightfast. I already know I like these pencils. Um, I used to use Prismacolor pencils and I still do once in a while. I really like that color. That's like a really great deep neutrally blue. Um, anyway, so I used to use the Prismacolor, the nice Prismacolor pencils, but these are so much nicer to hold and when you sharpen them, they don't break apart as much. So if you're just starting out <clears throat> and you haven't used colored pencils before, you can either buy a couple of the more expensive pencils like Derwent or Caran d'Ache. And when you go online and you see the price of these things for one pencil, you're going to have like a little bit of like a uh, feeling because you're going to be like, oh my God, oh my God, who spends that much on pencils? If you feel that way, it's Christmas time, it's Black Friday. If you're watching this as I'm putting this out, go ahead and purchase like one of the bigger sets of Prismacolors. You'll get a whole bunch of different colors in there to try. And they are nice enough and they've got some neutrals and saturated and lights and they've got all the things and you'll get a whole set of them at once to see if you even like colored pencils. Um, if you're somebody where quality though is super important and you really like nice things, what I would do is just find a couple colors you think you'd like in either the Caran d'Ache Luminance or the Derwent Lightfast and just buy, maybe treat yourself to like five pencils. It's going to run you about 20, 25 bucks for five pencils, um, which is a little bit horrifying when you're seeing <laughs> the amount of pencils that I'm about to swatch. Um, my husband doesn't watch these videos. Um, and we also keep our bank accounts separate anyway. But this is denim. So back to the swatching. This is denim and I like that color too. That's almost a little bit like an ultramarine, like a subtle ultramarine. Let's see if I have any other blues. So this is, this is a mid ultramarine. So that's a really nice color too. See, I like all those. Those three look really nice together. And I have a ton of greens. This is pine. Really like that. Anything that's a little bit neutral and subtle, I like. The tip broke off this one, but it should be okay. It's spruce green. So spruce green and pine green are pretty similar. This is a little bit more saturated and more blue. And this is a little bit subtler and less saturated. I have here, this is Midnight Blue. It's another nice color. Light Aqua. Let's see. I like having these light ones <clears throat> for layering and it also acts like a blender for the colored pencil. I usually like more scritchy marks like this, but that having that difference in there can be really cool too. And I like how sort of minty that is. It's a little bit more green than like that. There's so many green pencils I bought. This is Mallard Green and I had to buy it because of the name and the names will get you when you go look at the colored pencils. It's a nice like phthalo green. Yeah, the names will get you. You'll be like, I don't know if I really like that color, but 
it's mallard green and this is racing green <clears throat> So these three colors are all really similar. Like if you just bought one of these, you'd be fine. So that was a racing green. One of them was like pine green. I think the other one was spruce green. So definitely don't need all those. This is green earth. Nice neutrally mid-tone. Seaweed. And that's a nice like browny, bronzy green. Basil. It's like a nice rich green. Ivy. Really like that. It's very olivey and there's probably an olive green in here too. This is foliage. It's a little bit more of a saturated color, but I love like the variety of neutralized colors that you can get in the more higher end colored pencils. The Prismacolor pencils do have quite a bit of neutrals in them, so I don't want to be like, oh, those don't have any. They do. I just feel like there's more nuance between the neutrals. Like they have so many neutrals in the higher end pencils that you can really be kind of picky about what kind of neutral you're really going for. This is mountain green. So again, these are different, but they're similar enough that you could probably just do one of those. And I think that was the basil. This is lichen green, which this is a really nice color, but what's interesting is I think lichen, at least where I live, is a very minty green. It's not it's not like that at all, really, but that's okay. What is this? That's browns. All right, we did all the greens. Let's do some reds. This is scarlet, and I'm hoping to get like a nice orangey red. This is getting close. Want something even more saturated and orangey than that, and I'm hoping what I picked in the Caran Luminance might do the trick, but this is really nice too. This is cherry red. So we've got like a warm red and a cool red. The other layer. This is raisin, which I love. This is like this. This is like the purple for people who hate purple. <laughs> it really is. It's like, oh, close enough. It's like a, a maroon color. This is autumn brown. So it's just a nice neutral. It's almost like a very slightly pinky brown. This is chocolate. So I think it's almost like if you wanted a black, but you didn't quite want a black. This is like almost black, but not quite. So that'll be nice to have. Um, and I keep saying that'll be nice to have because who doesn't love um, 10 million art supplies? This is Mars Violet, I suspect. Another purple for people who hate purple. I am correct. It's like a smoky grayed out color. And why don't we do these together? This is dusky pink. So not dusty pink, dusky pink. That's really nice. I think I have a color like this in the luminance that's like a shell pink type color. I don't know if that's what it's called, but um, this one is cinnamon. So these two are really close. If you notice, if you just wanted, if you like these, but you just wanted to pick one, this is a little bit more peach and this one is a little bit more pink. And we have a few more. I think this is a peachy color too. So this is a pale peach. So this is just lighter. The, the difference in these is really value. So these two relate, they're more, they're both peachy colors, but again, this one's really light and will stay light. Um, sometimes that can be good for going over dark things or just for scribbling in something light in the background. This is dark honey. Who doesn't love that name? That's such a nice, rich color. And I love this when you have colors that are kind of neutralized. They're not like uh, 
kids crayon color right out of the box, but there's still like, there's a lot of richness and saturation to this. This is amber gold. This is really saturated. I don't know how much I'll use that, but you never know what you're gonna use in the future too. Sometimes like the season changes and you just get an itch to have pops of a certain color or your tastes change. So even though I don't think I'll probably use that right now, I don't know, maybe for an autumn. It's just really saturated. So this is yellow ochre. This is really nice. It's really subtle yellow. And last for the Derwent Light Fast is Champagne, which is almost the color of the paper. So if you want like a creamy white type color, that Champagne will do the trick. And let's take a look at, oh my God. <laughs> we'll go back and swatch these at the end. I missed a whole pack of markers. How ridiculous is that? Okay. Clearly I bought too much stuff. Stay. So I'll try to group these as I swatch them. They're all the luminance that I bought. I'm going through a colored pencil phase if that's not clear. All right, so this is, these are harder to read. This is Paraline Brown. That's like a reddish brown. I really like this. I like both of these. These are kind of similar. They're like trending in the same direction, but this is redder and this is a little bit more pinky and that's pretty cool. This is Alizarin Crimson. So these two are basically the same color. Hopefully this is the orangey red that I want. This is permanent red. Yep, this is just, and I know somebody is probably gonna be like, you're splitting hairs, those are the same color, but this is just a little more saturated and just a little bit more orangey than this one. This is what I'm looking for. That's gonna be a staple. This is Cornelian. So it's like a really nice, rich, autumny orange. And this is Burnt Ochre 10%. So the cool thing about Luminance colors is some of their colors they'll have in like, almost like tints and shade or intensity. So they'll have the color, but at 10%. So it's mixed with a lot of white and they'll have it at 50% and then they'll have it at full percent. So you can get a range of value and saturation within the same color. So this is really nice peachy color. And it is again, Burnt Ochre 10%. Let's do these. This is raw sienna with a nice autumny color. This is Indian yellow. That's really nice to kind of have. I don't think I'll use that a lot, but it's it's like a mustardy yellow, so it's just something different to have in there. Let me see. This is butternut. It's a very peachy color. Naples ochre. So the Naples ochre and the butternut, you can tell how there are they are different, but if you just wanted a color in that family like that, but you didn't want to buy a ton of pencils. You could just pick one of those. This is olive brown 10%. This is brown ochre 10%. I don't remember what the other one was. So this is really similar. I got kind of obsessed with all the neutrals that they have and I probably don't need all of those. I probably could have done with two, but we're here now. And dark 
So this is phthalo green, dark phthalo green. This is a really nice, rich forest green. I'm going to love that. Moss green. Again, another nice neutrally green. Green is one of my favorite colors to have a lot of. Um, so I have a lot of them. This is olive brown 50%. So this is the 50% and this is the 10%. I think I have olive brown somewhere in my other pencil set. So picture that, this, but like darker. This is dark sap green. This is really good for like winter palettes. It's that really wintry blue green. And this is middle cobalt blue. which is awesome because this is kind of, this is an ultramarine type color that I've been looking for, which obviously it's not ultramarine, it's cobalt blue, but that kind of vibrant purpley blue. This is ultramarine. And so there's the actual ultramarine color. This is awesome because I find some pencil sets, it's really hard to get a true ultramarine and cobalt and the luminance does a really good job with these genuine cobalt blue put it with the other cobalt probably don't need both cobalts this is a little bit lighter but it's not like if i was picking one i'd probably just pick that ice blue So ice blue and midnight blue, I think that's midnight blue. Or it's ocean blue, it's one of those. These are pretty similar, this is a little bit darker. This is burnt sienna, 10%. This is a really nice color, this is kind of getting into, this is almost like an in-between color for right here. You can kind of see it. Um, but this is why I love the way Luminance does their colors because this is a really awesome color to have and it's just a tint of the burnt sienna. So this is the actual burnt sienna. So you can see the difference. So that's 100%. This is 10%. I might have 50% unless I showed restraint. This is raw umber. says French gray. This is brown ochre, 50%. So again, another one of those 50% type colors. Really nice to have. Raw umber, 50%. So this is 50% and I think this is, this is also raw umber and that's 100% so you can kind of get a sense of the value differences. This isn't raw umber but it's 10% so you can kind of see the lightness and darkness when they do that. This is Castle Earth. So this is very similar to the chocolate over here. It's like a, it's a brown that's so dark it's almost black but not quite. Is this French gray? I thought I already said, I must have had a percent and this is the full French gray. The other one must have been a 10 or a 50%. I really like French gray though. It's got a little bit of a warmth to it. And the last one of these is dark indigo. So put this guy up here. So it's just that really kind of dark purpley blue. It's a true indigo. And that is it for the pencils. It's it for everything except the pack of markers that I forgot. So let's go back here and just swatch these real quick. This is almost like your bonus for staying till the end. This is just gray, 704. It's a nice, <clears throat> light gray. Although if maybe you were picking one, maybe just go with the lighter one. This is 728 warm gray light. 
These are really similar. So this is like a warm gray and that's like a cool gray. What else? Another warm gray. Seven seventeen cold gray. It's always nice. This is why <clears throat> grouping colors together when you're swatching, it just gives you a good sense. Like you can, it, this is called warm gray, but it, and this is called cool gray. But when you put them near each other, you can really see what that difference is. And last but not least is deep gray, and this is seven oh six. So that's like a nice dark purpley gray. And I think that is it. I lied. That was not it. So I forgot to open these. I got thought I ordered two of these. Maybe I only ordered one. I'll have to go through everything or maybe they were out of stock. Um, I've never had a Stillman and Burn sketchbook and I wanted something that was soft cover so that it was just a little bit lighter. Um, once sketchbooks get a little bit bigger, I'm just not crazy about the weight of them and I'm looking for, it's under here, isn't it? I'm wondering what the size difference is. So this is that kind of medium size moleskin. I know my camera is a little close. Maybe I'll turn it this way. And I'm just wondering. So this is like the perfect size because the page is not as long. Like this makes me, and I think Art Creations does this too. It makes me want to chop this section of the book off because I like the pages just a little bit more squared off. And this is probably like a B something size sketchbook. I can't remember like a B4 or something like that. And this has the ivory creamy colored pages, which I like. It's a nice lightweight. Try not to get the pages too dirty from my hands, but I guess it doesn't matter. These are more, it's smooth. So it's not like watercolor paper at all, but like if I were gonna compare it to watercolor paper, it's kind of like a hot press feel to it. Like it's, it's not as slick as like the surface of a moleskin or an art creations, if you're familiar with that. It's just a little bit more of a papery feel. So it's not textured, it is smooth, but it's just more papery feeling than that. Um, <clears throat> which means the paint and markers and things like that are gonna sink down into it more. I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. Um, it might be that I'll just use um, like acrylic gouache and pencils and crayons and things like that in here, but you never know. But I am really loving the size. I wish every sketchbook just came in this size. It's the perfect, it's the perfect size. And the other thing I got was, this is just Blick brand sketchbook paper. And I have huge sheets of this, but I wanted smaller sheets for sketching on <clears throat> without having to cut up my huge sheets because it's a pain. And I do believe, yeah, this is the same quality of paper. So it does have some weight to it. <clears throat> Sorry, it's like everything's getting stuck in my chest now. So this does have some weight to it. It's not like copy paper. It's heavier than copy or paper, but it's not as heavy as something like mixed media or Bristol paper. It's like nowhere close to that. <clears throat> and it's got a smooth papery surface. And in fact, it's probably, it's very similar to what this is. It's that typical sort of sketchbook papery drawing paper, but still really nice and really smooth. So these are gonna be nice to have around as like, to do small paintings or experiment with some supplies or drawing and just do quick, simple things. And a whole huge pack of this is super cheap. I wanna say it's like $7 for like a huge stack of like a hundred sheets or something like that. So if you're looking for cheap, but nice paper, this is cheap, but nice paper. And that actually is everything, I swear. I'm pretty sure. Okay, all right, that's it. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this art haul video. I know I had a great time filming it for you. 
I always like actually doing YouTube videos because being an artist is a bit of a solitary practice and it's a way to bring you guys into my studio and have an opportunity to share the stuff that I'm really excited about with other people. Um, I hope this sparked some ideas for you um, of things that you could try or if you haven't tried doing a sketchbook practice like this before, maybe, you know, give it a go. See if you like it. I found it's just, it's brought a lot of joy back into my art practice for me. Thanks for watching and happy holidays.